Well, hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jessica Likewise. I'm the CEO of Hope Education Services. I have 13 years experience as an ABA therapist, and I finally decided after relocating to sit for my BCBA exam. So as I'm studying, I'm making videos to help you study along with me. Today, we're gonna talk about the difference between positive and negative punishments, so stay tuned. <music> Well, hey guys, and welcome back. As I said, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about what the difference between positive and negative punishment is in ABA terms. But first we're gonna to need to talk about and define what is punishment in ABA. So oftentimes when we think about what punishment is from society or colloquial terms, what we think about is that something bad happened, right? You did something and then someone else did something bad as a result to punish you, right? So we think about an aversive consequence. But in ABA, that's not necessarily true. In ABA, specifically what punishment is, is when a consequence makes a behavior less likely to occur. So it doesn't matter what the intention of the person was, whether it was their intention to punish a behavior, whether or not they were disciplining you, like in society's terms, it simply means does a be is a behavior decreased as a result of a consequence. So an example of that. Let's say you lay down next to the pool or on the beach and you forget completely to put sunscreen lotion on, you fall asleep, you wake up five or six hours later and you have a horrible sunburn. Well, you're probably not gonna do that again, right? So the sunburn serves the purpose of a punisher in this example. Now, obviously that wasn't the intention of the sunburn, but that doesn't matter. In ABA terms, when you're looking at punishment, all you're looking at is, did a behavior decrease as a result of a consequence. So there are two types of punishment in ABA. The first one of these is positive punishment. So positive punishment is when a stimulus is added immediately following a behavior that decreases the likelihood that it's gonna occur again. So in this example, the sunburn forms as a Put as a punishment. So here's some other examples. Let's say a person gets a verbal reprimand. So if the every time you engage in a behavior, the teacher says, no, that's not nice, and that decreases the behavior, then that could be a punishment. Or a speeding ticket. If you get a speeding ticket, you have to pay a fine. There's an addition of a fine, right? That is an example of positive punishment. But it's important to note that these are only examples of, they're, they're positive punishment because a stimulus was added, right? The sunburn is a stimulus that was added. The verbal reprimand was a stimulus that was added. The speeding ticket is a stimulus that's added, but they are only punishment if they actually decrease the behavior. So if a person gets a speeding ticket and then stops speeding, then the speeding ticket served its purpose of punishment. If a person gets a speeding ticket and it does not decrease speeding, then it actually does not considered punishment in ABA terms it would have no consequence on the behavior, no effect on the behavior. So it's a consequence, but it's not punishment. So again, positive punishment, it's the addition of an undesirable stimulus that makes the behavior less likely to occur, but it's the removal of a desired stimulus with negative. So let's look at some examples of that. So let's say a child is playing um, in recess, they're having a really good time, they're playing on the swing, and then all of a sudden they make fun of one of their friends on the playground and the teacher, they're on the swing already, the teacher says, you know what, you have a five minute timeout. So the, this playing on the swing was removed from the child. He already had access to it, but he got it removed as a result of his behavior. If, if and only if he's less likely to tease his friends again, then that served a purpose of punishment. It decreased the behavior of him making fun of his friends because he lost access to swinging on the swing. Now, but part of that is he actually needed to want access to swinging on the swing. If something's removed and it doesn't have a negative consequence, well, then it's not punishment. So let's look at an example of you're eating at a restaurant and you need to get up and go to the bathroom. So while you get up and go to the bathroom, let's say that your dinner gets thrown away by the waiter because they don't realize that you still wanted it, right? So in the event that you wanted your dinner in the event that you expect it to come back from the bathroom and eat your dinner, then that potentially could serve the purpose of punishment because you're probably less likely to do that again, to get up and walk away from your food, right? And not tell anyone, hey, I'm still working on this. So in that example, it would be punishment. But if you didn't want your dinner, let's say you completely finished eating 
and you were completely done with dinner and then you got up to go to the bathroom and the weeder threw it away, well, then it's not punishment, right? Because then you didn't actually want access to it anymore. You were, com you were done with it. So the, when it comes to negative punishment, it's the removal of something that someone wants and already has access to that makes the behavior less likely to occur. So I really hope this helps you understand the difference between positive punishment and negative punishment. These are also often confused with positive and negative reinforcement. Specifically, negative reinforcement is often confused with punishment because as society, we hear the word negative and we think bad as opposed to removal, which is what it means in ABA terms. So if you are confused about that, check out my website, hopeeducationservices.com. You know, click the the subscribe button. I'm going to be defining more ABA terms just like this. I've actually also already done videos on negative reinforcement, positive reinforcement, and specifically the difference between negative punishment and positive punishment. So if you want to watch this video, it'll follow that video. It'll follow this one. So happy studying for your BCBA exam. I really look forward to helping you. Again, if you're confused, head over to my website, hopeeducationservices.com. I'm actually taking all of the study notes that I'm writing. They're not only in the comments of this video, but they're all posted on my blog as well on my website. They are simply my study notes. I did not formally turn them into eloquently written blog posts, so they're just notes, but they're free. They're there for you to study if you want them. You can act system. It's my gift for you for watching and my emails and subscribe, watching the videos and subscribing to my channel. So have an amazing time studying and I look forward to being here next time to define the next ABA term for you.